Well, hello everyone, I'm Billy Dees and we're going to talk about LinkedIn today. Just a quick disclaimer, if I may, this is how I use the platform and I don't claim to be an authority. This came up because some of my marketing groups suggested that we share some of our methods on LinkedIn and I would be happy to do that for you. This video is also not going to necessarily be about content, but I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention that anytime you are creating content for content marketing, that content should have a value beyond necessarily trying to get a client. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're a home builder. That information that you are offering should be along the lines of how to select a contractor, how to pick out the best roof for your given budget, and so on. It should be valuable information that people are searching for when they are building a home. By contrast, you want to stay away from talking about how great you are. Stay away from sounding like a commercial. When you use terms like I'm the home building guru, master of the universe, it starts to sound like BS and it will get turned off. Let's start with your profile. Obviously a picture. General wisdom says this should be a professional, recent representation of yourself. And I chuckle because in my case, it isn't necessarily recent. However, this image is associated with me on many, many different levels on the internet. It's kind of like Nipper, the little dog for RCA. And um, with that being said, this one is instantly recognized by people who are searching me. I would recommend doing what I would do when it does come time to change this. Make sure you change the picture that identifies you across everything that you have going on. So if somebody runs across you on Twitter or in my case in the uh, uh, podcasting fields, they come here and say, yep, that's the guy that I know. Here is the header or uh, the background image, you may call it try to choose something that represents you. In my case, microphones and so on. There are some ways that you can create good imagery back here and Canva, if you are not familiar, is a great resource to do that. In your description, I wouldn't necessarily use hashtags. I use them because I feel they pop out a little bit more. But here again, something represent, uh, that represents you instantly um, a lot of people for me uh, do search podcast and I want them to see that word pop um, when they do a search, not have to search for it down in the meat of my profile. Your about section here again, I believe in straightforward what connects you to the marketplace. A lot of these I run across are written in the third person. I don't know why people do that. I would recommend talking directly to your audience. You have some featured things here that you can put in your profile. We'll talk a little bit more about articles uh, later. As you go down, this is experience section is very much akin to a resume. And you'll hear different things about resumes. Basically, they say keep them short. I have most of my detail in my recent and active stuff. The later stuff I go very light on. Recommendations. This is where you can get recommendations and give them. That's something that if we're in a marketing group, I would recommend that we do for each other. It doesn't necessarily have to be related to, let's say, work that you've mutually done together. But when you're in the online world, what people want to know is that you're a real person. And if you, you can share recommendations with people that you know, at least on the level of acknowledging that they exist as a real flesh and blood person. That is always a good thing. When you hit the home section, what comes up here is information from the various sources that you are following. The first source, of course, would be your connections as they post content that will come in your feed. This is very much similar to Facebook. 
The other place that you may be getting information is from the influencers that you are following. And I would say that is always a good idea. Pick a few, not a lot, but at least a few people that are just absolutely monsters in your marketplace and follow them. Very important what I'm about to say next. When this information is coming through, make sure you interact with it like it, make intelligent comments, do this very often. This is very important. This will increase your visibility in that marketplace. And I've heard things, you know, like un, unimaginable high numbers of times that you should be making comments. Obviously there's only so much time in the day, so you have to balance that, but you want to make sure that you are interacting with content that is relevant to you. Another thing that you can do in terms of following is following hashtags. In my case, I may follow podcasts and obviously things related to podcasting and so forth comes up at that point. Now, in terms of posting your own content, there is a number of ways that you can do that. There's at least three. The first one is probably the most obvious. You go to your feed, there will be a uh, section that says start a post. So you simply start a post. This is usually good for brief postings of content, uh, maybe a paragraph or so. You obviously can add pictures. Images are always very important. And another thing that you can do, very important, so important, video. Make sure that you post some video content. Video content right now is very big on LinkedIn. Short videos, and I already talked about content, valuable information. It is also very good to post videos native to LinkedIn. And what I mean by that, as opposed to inserting a link from YouTube or something like that, the native postings, I believe, get driven a little better. You want them to be in pre-roll when people run across them. And my general rule of thumb is don't send people somewhere else. They're on LinkedIn checking you out. Keep them on LinkedIn. You can post content on LinkedIn is by creating a business page. And quite frankly, I don't understand why more LinkedIn users do not do this. Again, when posting content, I could post a link to my website, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But here again, my philosophy, as long as people are on LinkedIn and they're reviewing my content, why not keep them on LinkedIn? And a business page is a great way to do that. Another method of posting content on LinkedIn is this. We'll go back to the main page, the home page, and where you normally start a post underneath is write an article. Just like a blog post, you can put a headline, graphics, and as much detailed writing as you wish. And like a blog post, these posts are viewable off of LinkedIn. All right. So for example, we'll go back to my profile here and here is a recent article that I posted and I have pictures and I have some links to some information that I was talking about and I can share this. If I share it in a post on LinkedIn that goes into the feed or I can copy the link to post wherever I wish and I can also go to Facebook and Twitter. And again, these articles can be viewed by people who aren't necessarily logged in to LinkedIn. Okay, well, very briefly, that was my overview of LinkedIn. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, just message me and I'll give you the best advice that I can. I'm Billy Dees, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation of LinkedIn. Thank <laughs> you.